So, so boxers off the table. This is not eating into your three minutes, Becky. You really need to know. So three, so three minutes from now. So unfortunately, it would be impossible to explain why I'm standing without mentioning the twisting of truth, deceit, and cover-ups that's occurred in the coalition government in the last few years. My window on that is through investigating fracking. I own a farm on the South Downs. Um, we have our own borehole, so perhaps I had a particular vested interest in looking into the process, um, which I did. And it was a sort of window into Westminster. I went up to various committee meetings, and government appears to be hollowed out through corporate interest. Westminster has become a place where there is corporate lobbying all the time, and that's affecting policy. Um, I don't know the candidates for the Conservative Party and the Lib Dems. I really don't know how much they know about the fracking process, whether um, if they know a lot, then I hope they object vociferously. But the parties, what they've been doing in Westminster in promoting it is um, deeply concerning. And when you look into Westminster, the corporate influence is, is everywhere. Obviously, it's now affecting the NHS. It's starting to influence our education system. And it's not just the House of uh, Commons. It's also the House of Lords. The Mayfield Town development is one Conservative Lord, uh, one Lib Dem Lord, working together to head a company that wants to build 10,000 houses on about 2,000 acres of Sussex which is utterly disrespectful of the rural environment. And um, what's clear is we can't just say no. It's not a case of just saying we don't want fracking, we don't want these houses. There needs to be a vision. Politicians need to have a vision for the 21st century of what else we can do. And obviously, it's possible my vision to do with uh, future developments in rural areas is that they should be ultra-low impact. So if I was working as an MP... I would do my best to ensure that the next, maybe starting 800 houses that are given permission in Mid-Sussex are ultra-low impact and designed to fit in with rural living, which garden cities certainly don't. So, um, just to finish, standing as an independent is, it requires you to... There's nobody to ask, you know, what's our policy on the economy. So I started from scratch without any vested interest, just looking you know, what's happening with the economy. And there are various things to do with our banking system, the creation of money and um, fractional reserve banking that really need to change. Slowly, but eventually quite profoundly. And none of the parties, the main parties, are talking about that because of banking lobby. So, so long as everyone's aware that the government has been hollowed out by corporate interest, we may have a chance of a 21st century, which is beyond party politics and free from vested interests. Thank you, Becky. Thank you for giving us time. Uh, Toby. Thank you. I'm Toby, the UKIP candidate. I got the question we were asked to answer. It was saying, we would like you to tell us what your policies are on the environmental issues on the countryside in Mid-Sussex and why they're important to you personally. Well, firstly, I would like to say that I'm no climate expert or geologist of any sort. So I'm going to give you my views as best as I can this evening. To me, the greatest importance to preserve the environment is actually to concentrate on the enormous population the world is now coming to be. When I was at school learning geography, I recall there were three and a half billion people on the planet. That's about 38 years ago. Now there's 7.3 billion people on this planet, and we're all gobbling up resources as fast as we can. So what are our policies for UK? Firstly, we wish to protect the green belt. Secondly, we would like to identify in this, camp, in this constituency in particular more brown land in Mid-Sussex that's simply not good enough to say there isn't any and stop there because we believe on using brown land first for building projects. We don't believe in green taxes and that's for a simple reason that we think businesses will be driven away to other countries because they're uneconomic in this country and there, there they may use non-green fuels which won't please some of the audience. We believe in conserving the countryside, and in fact I'm with the Council for the Protection of Rural England and Wildlife Trust on this. We want to try and help preserve species as far as possible. Um, one of the things I'd like to encourage is cycling and walking projects in all road schemes where practicable to encourage less pollution and better health. 
And one of the things also that's most important is that we repeal the national planning policy framework the Tories have brought in and its presumption in favour of development that has brought about things like the Mayfield uh, development as a possibility, unfortunately. Uh, ideally, I'd like to require councils to be involved in tree planting efforts, actually, and forest protection should be required nationally and here. We should all remember this evening when we're talking about carbon dioxide, I'm sure it'll come up a lot, but that's actually plant food. Trees, well, we should plant many, many more of them. They reduce temperature, so if that's one of your things, then we should be planting many more of those. Large-scale developments should be stopped in Mid-Sussex. This, I believe, should be returned to being a more rural constituency, the one that I believe Sir Nicholas Soames wanted to join when he came from Crawley, saying it should, he wanted to go to a more rural constituency. Well, is it? That's what I ask the audience. So without population control, and therefore a cap on immigration of some sort, as you know the UKIP party would like to do by leaving the European Union and taking control, I feel there are an awful lot of problems ahead of us. You know, there has been a warming cycle, I'm reading, for about 330 years. Before that, the ice fields were on the Thames, it was bitterly cold, there was no sunspot activity. In Roman times, it was very much warmer than now. There was olives in Bonn and grapes growing in Yorkshire. So, thank you. So, I will come back to those climate issues, no doubt, in the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. At the time of the last election in 2010, uh, we had suffered a major global economic collapse. Vince Cable described it as the financial system having a heart attack. No one party won outright at the last election. And we in the Lib Dems were faced with a very, very difficult choice, particularly for those like me who had spent their entire lives fighting against the Tories. Do we let them govern on their own? Or do we have a coalition government? We decided to go for a coalition government. So in 2010, we went into government with what Friends of the Earth described as the most ambitious green policies of all the major parties. But we only had 8% of the MPs in Parliament. Just 8%. That's all we have today. So how did we do with our 8% of MPs? Well, faced with the Conservatives, who described all measures to combat climate change as green crap, what did we manage to do? We doubled investments in renewables. We insulated a million homes in the last two years. We planted several more trees. And Ed Davey, who was a Lib Dem minister, was credited by the Danish Prime Minister for being the leading person, being instrumental in helping the EU agree a very ambitious target of reducing emissions by 40% by 2030. We created a green investment bank for the first time ever in this country, creating a quarter of a million jobs, a quarter of a million green jobs. <coughs> so if the, if the Lib Dems are in government next time, what will be our priority? Five green laws. So in our manifesto, they're printed out tonight, we'll be handing out copies later on. But five green laws, this is what we want to see. Laws on reducing carbon emissions, transport, waste, buildings and nature. Those are our priorities for the next government. We want to have a zero carbon Britain by 2050. We want a legally binding target on all public bodies for 70% recycling. We want to plant at least one tree for every child that is born. That's 750,000 trees a year, approximately. We want new nature sites to be protected. We want all main railway lines to be running on electric by 2030. We want low emission cars. These are our priorities. So, in Mid-Sussex, the choice traditionally has been between the Conservatives and the Lib Dems. We have faced a tough five years as a party. But we have 8% of MPs in Parliament, and yet we've delivered all of that. We've delivered locally on green issues, and we've delivered nationally. And I hope that when you come to consider who you want as your MP, you'll vote for somebody like me, who will work with other Liberal Democrats, to make sure we deliver on our five green laws. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miranda Dybal. I'm your green candidate. Excuse me. Um, I live locally. I live in Cookfield, not far from here at all. 
Um, I'm new to this, um, completely new to politics, not that long ago I could describe myself as being apolitical. Wasn't interested at all, felt completely powerless. Um, much like you know, quite a few people who think voting there's no point. So what brought me to the Green Party? Well, I can tell you, um, in 2013, I was going along the um, Balkan Road from Cookfield, and I passed a number of tents that had been put up, and I thought, what's going on here? So I stopped, I had a look, chatted to a few people, uh, and found out it's all about this fracking. I'd never heard of fracking before. I really had my head in the sand. So I went away, did my own research, and was absolutely horrified to see what was going on. Um, especially in this beautiful area that I live in, um, just down the road from where I live. So that brought me to the Green Party, that was the gateway issue that brought me here. Um, this is all about the environment, Friends of the Earth. Um, it goes without saying that in the Green Party it's our number one priority to combat climate change. It's the biggest threat that we face. Without combating that there will be no economy. We can't run an economy in a world that just can't sustain us anymore. So for me, for the, in the Green Party, really what is important is sustainability, but also equality as well. And social justice plays a really important part in when we put our policies together. And just going back to what Toby was saying, um, saying there are too many people, I don't believe that. I believe the problem is the resources are not fairly um, shared out between us. It's not a case of too many people. Um, and another thing we really fight for is for true democracy. We think at the moment the current system is first past the post, is not representative of everyone's views. Um, so for me, the two important environmental issues of fracking in this area, it's fracking and general oil extraction as well, which includes conventional, and the um, development um, that's going on. Um, and yes, the main reason I do love it here is because of the countryside. And I really believe the countryside is the heartbeat of Mid-Sussex. We have a fantastic rural economy here, and that thrives because of the countryside. If we had fracking here, it would rip that heartbeat out. Now, as your Green MP, I would oppose fracking under any circumstances. You cannot regulate the fracking industry. And I think it's unjust that politicians are saying that that is possible. And also saying that, OK, we won't have fracking here. Let's have it somewhere else, in a more disadvantaged area. That is just unreasonable. We have no confidence that this can be robustly regulated. It's a very dangerous industry. Reasons why? There are too many vested interests. The record of the uh, behaviour of the industry abroad is terrible, and also in this country as well, the way we've seen this industry behave already has been terrible. And that's on top of the risk to air and health and the current infrastructure and our rural economy here in Mid-Sussex. Um, OK, thank you. I'm Greg Mountain, and I'm the candidate for the Labour Party. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why there are fewer squashed insects on the front of your car when you come to clean it these days. Two reasons, global warming and the use of insecticides. Global warming affects insect life cycles and insecticides poison them. So what's important to me on this question is managing a very delicate balance between the demands of society, us, and the immediate need to reverse the impact of the last 60 years of mankind. Our challenge is to manage natural, the natural environment in mid-Sussex. More than anything, we need to become the generation that leaves the natural environment in a better place than we inherited it. In mid-Sussex, the impacts we face, global warming, higher levels of air pollution. Just think of that time you've driven over Ditchling Beacon, looked over towards the hog's back, and you can't see the view clearly. Threats of flooding. Those of you may be aware that the line between Cooksbridge and Plumpton got flooded earlier this year. We face reductions in woodlands and wetlands. We face urban sprawl between Hayward Heath and Cookfield, between Burgess Hill and Hayley. We face the loss of birds and wildlife, endangered species, such as the cuckoo, such as barn owls. We face increases in noise pollution, Gatwick, Air, Gatwick and the air flights, dare I mention. So what must we do? Protect the environment. Improve planning. Get a district plan. 
Labour plans more power to local communities. We should oppose large scale building on green fields, such as the Mayfield development, and I congratulate those people who have been involved in opposing it so far. We oppose fracking. Labour safeguards effectively prevent the granting of exploratory licences in Mid Sussex. And let's not forget, Balkan is outside the constituency, but it will have an impact. Labour environmental policies, including making homes more efficient, we set it, or we will set a no carbon generation of electricity by 2030. I'm pledged to support flood-free future, so stop building homes where they are at risk of flooding, so it's not just around Linfield Bridge. We will encourage woodland planting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Andrew. Um, President, and we're all of us in this hall proud of the towns, the village, the villages and the countryside in which we live. And I've always been determined to do my best to look after their interests and to see to it that any of their substantial concerns are properly represented in the House of Commons and indeed in the wider Western but I think it's safe to say that the biggest locality in Mid Sussex is planned. We do need more houses here. But like everyone else, I worry that many young people find it almost impossible to get their feet on the housing ladder. But we also need to protect the beautiful West Sussex countryside and ensure that any new developments are sustainable. There has already been very significant growth here, as everyone knows, and there is a huge pressure on our infrastructure. And we should all remember that the development of Mid-Sussex is very hard to manage, not least because of the importance and, to my mind, the value constraints of the high wheeled AOMB, all of which must be properly respected and which cover almost two-thirds of the district and are thus protected by the highest protection under national policy. Now, the Localism Act abolished housing targets, instead requiring councils to introduce local plans to meet housing needs. It also introduced neighbourhood plans which puts communities in control of where housing should go and enables our villages and towns to protect themselves. I am a strong supporter of neighbourhood planning and of Mid-Sussex District Council's approach. These plans are the way forward to meet local needs and I have strongly opposed, because of that, major developments including the Mayfield New Town as well as many other possible developments put forward by highly opportunistic developers all over the constituency. One of my great concerns has been the increasing problems as successful places like Mid-Sussex get busy for the need for really basic, adequate local infrastructure, not just roads and railways, but schools and the health service. I'm very concerned about litter and all that is, this place, this part of the world is dreadfully uh, prone to littering, which is really disgraceful. There is going to be very substantial population increase in, Mid -Sus in, in West Sussex. And this, of course, has very serious implications for us and will require further investment in appropriate areas. And why it is that I have so strongly, for the last 32 years, not only first of all as a member of Parliament for Crawley, but for the last 17 years as a member of Parliament for Mid-Sussex, very strongly opposed the building of a second runway at Gatwick. It would make Gatwick bigger than the existing Heathrow Airport with an already desperately overloaded local infrastructure, and it would create total havoc, and be nothing short of catastrophe for the environment of this area. I will, if I may, just add to this meeting that I was for many years a member of the Council of the National Trust, and until very recently I was a trustee of the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, and I'm now chairman of the all-party group on this matter. And I am a long-standing member of the of CPR. <laughs> If I may call you it, sir, uh, I'm in a lucky position that there's no way I'm going to win this thing. It's the fourth time I've contested it, as the fourth time, but no chance of winning it. No. So I can say what I want, really, because I'm never going to get any, any position to do anything about it. Most of the views that I give to my, to my personal views, rather than those of these parties, a lot of questions are a bit on a heavy side. Um, just a few things on, on the environment. First of all, let's stick with the same about litter. Um, I think it's disgusting if you would drop this in the first place. And what we need is, is more police, a lot of control stopping litter, people dropping litter, 
and actually having the power to enforce anti litter things rather than going to go to paperwork and, and not being able to enforce things like that. And obviously, it's education. All those people drop litter, there's, there's plenty of things around, or take it home with you, don't just drop it in, in anywhere. Just an example, where I live in Baldy, quite country lane in the middle of nowhere, some inconsiderate, I can't think of the word, person dumped a whole lorry load of litter right away down up the road, right it all across the road. It took four days, despite several phone calls for the council to come and clear it, and they made no effort whatsoever to trace the first thing dumped, despite there being clear evidence of the address is not on it. And uh, I think litter is disgusting. Uh, and another thing, like previously, like cycling, yes, I, I'm all for cycling, and all new developments which we don't want in Greenfield cycling.